Welcome back friends, Dan Vega here. And today I wanna to talk to you about connecting to a database in a Spring Boot application. More specifically, I've had a lot of comments lately on YouTube videos and in my courses that people are having trouble connecting to database using a data source name. So in today's tutorial, we're gonna create a new project. We will see this uh, error happen in place. Not really an error, it's actually a feature. Uh, we'll see it happen in place and we'll find out how to correct it. Before we do that, this video is sponsored by me. So if you wanna learn a little bit more about me, head over to danvega.dev. That is my personal website. Uh, on here, you will learn quickly that I love to learn. I love to teach others what I'm learning and it's been a passion of mine for a long time now. Uh, I do that through a series of articles, videos, courses, newsletter, and now with this equipment that I have, I'm going to be getting into streaming, so stay tuned for that. Uh, with that though, let's go ahead and jump into today's tutorial. What we're gonna do here today is create a new project. We'll see this problem come up and we'll look at why it's actually happening and then we'll take a look at how to fix it. So I just like to have this caveat before, anytime I use IntelliJ, I'm using IntelliJ Ultimate Edition. You do not need to be using that. Uh, the only reason, um, one of the main advantages you get from the Ultimate Edition is the Spring Initializer is built right into the IDE. If you wanted to and you're using the Community Edition, you can go into start.spring.io in your web browser and do the same thing. Uh, generate a zip file and import it into your uh, IDE. So uh, don't worry about what I'm using. Please feel free to use whatever uh, IDE or text editor you're using. I'm a big fan of Visual Studio Code. You can really do this, pro uh, this tutorial wherever you are. So with that, let's go ahead and create a new project. So I'm gonna choose Java 11. Uh, again, you should be safe with whatever version of Java you're using. I think anything after eight would be okay. I'm gonna click next, and I'm going to give this a group of dev.danvega, and we'll say this is the h2 uh, unique name. Um, and then the rest of this looks okay. I'm gonna just take this off the package, and we'll click next. And for, de uh, for dependencies, uh, this is gonna be a pretty simple project. We're just gonna create a web project, and we're gonna go into SQL. So again, we're going to be creating a just a basic connection to a database. Uh, it, we're gonna choose Spring Data JDBC. I'm not actually going to be writing any JDBC here. Um, if you are interested in that, I actually just released the video. So I'll go ahead and uh, link to that in the description below, which gives you a complete walkthrough of how to use um, the Spring Data REST template. So I have that as my dependency, and I'm also gonna choose the H2 database. And from a de dependency standpoint, that's really all we need. So we're gonna go ahead, click next, uh, th make sure all of our settings here look good, and we'll go ahead and click finish. All right, so here we are in my project. I'm just going to go down into source, main, Java, and here is our basic application. So the first thing that we wanna do is go ahead and connect to a database. So the first thing that I would do to accomplish that is I would go into resources and application.properties. And here's where you would set up your properties for your database. So the first thing I might set up is a data source name. So I'm gonna come in here and start typing data source. And there should be a name. And so this is going to be the name of the data source that you're connecting to. So I'm gonna call mine course platform. Now, one thing we wanna do when we go ahead and launch our application, we wanna be able to jump into the H2 console and view all of our tables, our data, et cetera. So I'm gonna go ahead and enable that because it's not enabled by default. As you can see here in gray, that is the default value of false. So we're gonna set that to true. And that is all that we need to do to connect to our database. So remember, we are using an H2 in-memory database. And so what I wanna do is actually go ahead and run this application. So I'm gonna come into my main class and run that. And then what I'll do is head over to the browser and try to connect to our database and using the H2 console. All right, so here I am in the H2 console and for the JDBC URL, uh, especially when we're using an in-memory uh, database, the URL looks kind of like this. So it goes JDBC colon H2 colon mem for memory, 
colon, and then the name of the data source. So in my case, you saw I put in course underscore platform. The username is going to be SA and the password is going to be blank. So if we go ahead and test our connection, we'll, we'll see that we are getting a problem here. We are not able to connect to our database. So what is going on here? So the easiest way to find this is to go back to the IDE and take a look in the console. So here in IntelliJ, I'm going to expand this. And if we look in the console, we'll see down here that the H2 console is available at slash H2 console. Now that is what the defaults for that is. You can override that setting if you want to in your application.properties file. But now you see it says database available at JDBC H2 mem, and then this really random uh, set of numbers and letters. So this is what has been throwing people off. Uh, again, I've gotten comments on YouTube videos and in my courses about why is this happening? I've set the data source name. Why can't I just connect to course platform? So I actually tracked this down to a commit and here is what happened. The, if you look in data source properties, you can bring this up in IntelliJ as well or in your IDE and I'm, we'll take a look at that in a second. But somewhere around 2.3.0 milestone one, a default was changed. So the private Boolean generate unique name was defaulted to false because there is no default value. And because it's a primitive uh, Boolean type, you will get a default value of false there. At some point it was, it was changed here to be true. So now this means that um, no matter what we set as our data source name, it's going to generate a random unique name. And that's why we were getting that random unique name in there. So back in our IDE, if we wanted to, we could do a search for this. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and command O and just look for data source properties. And if we pull that up, you should see that generate unique name is indeed set to true. So no worries, we can actually fix this. So we're gonna go into our application.properties and under our data source name, I'm gonna say generate unique name and I'm gonna go ahead and set this to false. So if I were to go ahead and rerun the application, we'll take a look in the console again and we'll see, we should see uh, if everything worked okay, that we actually get the right um, JDBC URL. So here's H2 console available. And now that looks a lot better. Data, database available at JDBC H2 mem course platform. So now if we head over to our H2 console, we should be able to go ahead and test this connection. And it looks like it was successful and we can go ahead and connect to the database. So as I mentioned, if you are running Spring Boot 2.3.0 or later, uh, this is probably affecting you. And I know this was a change that just kind of happened at 2.3 and really started to cause some issues. Now I will say that most of the time, this is actually a good thing because a lot of time I'm using an H2 in-memory database to just spin up some tests. And in that case, I don't really don't care about the name. A unique name actually works great. But in this case, where I'm actually using the H2 database as a dev database, um, that doesn't work. So you need to make sure you set that to false. So I think that's what, where we will end it today. If you found value in this, please go ahead and leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. That really helps me out. And as always, friends, happy coding. Yeah.